Happy President's Day to everybody. This is the Show to Be Named Later podcast. I'm Johnny Voss, sitting alongside with my friend Noah Storzinger from Kansas City, Missouri. How you doing, buddy? Good. How you doing today? Very good. Very good. So you're all safe and sound. Uh, you you, you got to let us know a little bit about what what just went down now. And and I want to start by by saying now I I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard a rumor that Roger Goodell came out uh, after celebrations in Kansas City uh, last week and um, has now I I don't know I, I don't know if this is true or not, but it banned not banned but. They're, they're going to try to do something when it comes to parades or celebrations after winning the Super Bowl. Have you heard anything about this at all? I have not. I, I, I figured that going forward, I, maybe maybe there will be something new. Um, but you know what? It, it's, it's a society you live in. It's always, it could always happen. You never know. I mean, it just happened to be one of the biggest, biggest events in Kansas City of the year. Um, which was just unfortunate. I, I don't know what will change, especially like, I mean, if the Chiefs win again next year, you have no idea, you know, what it's going to look like. I've seen a bunch of people that said, you know, Super Bowl, uh, the uh, the championship parades are ruined and it, it's never going to be the same. But I don't know if that's the case. It, it, it's, I don't know. It, it was an unfortunate event, but at the same time, um, you know, the these guys weren't coming to the event to to people i mean it was a it was a disagreement how it always starts um so it it was unfortunate well i was gonna say you guys are old hat down there in kansas city i mean three of the last four years you would figure that you guys know how to behave at at something like this but uh um i i I don't know i mean it it, it's it's not it's it's not even you know like we, we could go on and on and talk about well this is the world. This is what it's what it, where it's going. No, this is the world we live in. I'm tired of it, you know. And and uh, I I just I I I I I think enough's enough that finally we're gonna have to as as a country come together and say that we're just we're just not gonna take this any longer as as far as the extreme violence and everything that goes and and I guess the pointless uh idea of violence you know like well are, are you looking at me no i'm not looking at you well why aren't you looking at me you know or uh that guy's got better shoes than i do or he, he dripped nacho cheese on my shoe and so that means that i'm going to 20 people on uh, half of them under the age of 16 and you know and the other thing is like i think like jacob fry's little buddy is your mayor of kansas city right so those kids should be out you know uh, post no bail and should be out in time for Travis's wedding. I would think, you know, uh, and I, I wasn't, I, I, I didn't get, you know, the, the word yet, but I'm sure Donald Trump was somehow, uh, indicted in, in causing this to happen. No, I'm not a Trump fan. I'm just saying this is the world we live in. And finally, we've got to say enough is enough. I mean, this is sports for God's sake. It, there, there can't be anything so pressing um, that you would ruin something. Like I say, when you have, when, when you shoot up half of, or half half of the people that you shoot are under the age of sixteen, um, you know, I, I would have hoped that the the heroes that had caught those two individuals, I think they should have been allowed to beat the piss out of them until they were brought into custody, and everybody else around them should have been able to beat the piss out of them. Um, that that's how I feel, but you know, it's well, neither here nor there. The, those those people that that stopped or there's the video. I don't know if you're what you saw was the the person that tackled the guy and everything. Like, um, the I I feel like the chief should do should do some for it. Really, the the city should do some for for having the balls to to jump on an active shooter like that and tackle tackle him whatever. Like that's pretty ballsy. So you know it, it would be cool. I think for the Chiefs to to do something. I, I see people saying, give them a Super Bowl ring that I don't know. I, I don't know, but um, it, it's, yeah, it, it's unfortunate. And, but I don't know going forward. I, I just, I don't, I don't know if we see anything different. I mean, you, you had already, you already had a, a bunch of people there with, with, you know, guns anyways, in in all of the police that were there and it's just, it, it doesn't stop it. Um, but, but something's got to change. Okay. Okay. And uh, speaking of Travis Kelsey, I see he made an absolute GD fool out of himself at the, uh, the victory party there. Uh, and my question is, is now, as far as the celebration goes, is it, um, 
you know, it used to be a competition about who could make it rain more so. Now is it to the point where these folks are like, let's see who can get the most ripped, the most intoxicated, and then make an absolute fool out of myself uh, in front of millions and millions of people? Because that's what I saw. I feel like. I, I feel like it started with, um, I think it was uh, when Tom Brady won his with the Bucks. He got off a boat and he 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 was just destroyed at that point, yeah. and everyone saw it, and it was just. Um, and so I think that's maybe where it started. I mean, I think everyone was getting drunk anyways, but I think now, and everyone does dumb stuff when you're drunk. Um, and I think now, just with how many more phones and social media and everything like you just see more of it compared to maybe in the past but yeah it's definitely like who can get the drunk it I'd, I'd be getting slammed at that i don't know about you right right i i don't know i still i think there were a lot of kids there so you know i would i would maybe tone it down i definitely wouldn't do the dwight gooden where i got you know an eight bowl of coke and and watch the parade from my my living room you know but uh um i don't know i i just uh it, it was uh, it was a little embarrassing for for some of them. Uh, uh, Travis Kelsey, I I've been I I think that he's kind of shot his his load as far as embarrassing moments um, just throughout the the playoffs of the Super Bowl weekend. But um, and it's not because I'm a hater on that way. I don't hate Trailer Swift. Um, I just you know I just think he looked kind of ridiculous. But uh, speaking of ridiculous, did you see who took the defensive coordinator job in Dallas? Mr. Uh, Zimmer, I believe, right? Correct. And he had to call a press conference to talk about, I know everybody thinks I'm a jerk, but, uh, and I just thought that that was funny that that's how you're going to lead going into your, your new job is that everybody thinks I'm a jerk. Well, you know, a guilty as charged, maybe. <laughs> hey, it, it, a lot of stuff came out of that Vikings locker room when he was, was ousted. And, and it's a lot of stuff that, really made you look at, at what kind of coach he was. He had some great defenses, uh, maybe not towards the end there, but he, he kind of was. Yeah, that, that's kind of been the I, – I, I think the – Everybody agreed on that. Now, I've, I've never met. I mean, his, his press conferences were so exciting uh, when he was head coach here uh, with the Vikings. But uh, we'll see what he what he can do down in Dallas. Now, um, I want to want to shift gears a little bit because I did want to mention now I watched uh, our previous podcast, the one we had uh, our friend Chris on and uh, might have a little bone to pick I uh, with with you and Chris, because. Um, I didn't really go after it while we had him on. And maybe this is, you know, the passive aggressiveness in me not to say anything at the time, but I was surprised both of you guys tipped your hat basically to the twins and, and our off season moves. And I, I, I was like, I don't know, are these guys in line? Like, are, are they getting kickbacks from the twins? Like they're getting free tickets or something because nobody is saying that, that they have done a wonderful job in the off season. And so I, I, I mean, I, I got to call your bluff just a little bit because I'm still not happy about it. I, I will forever defend this. I, I don't, I, I can't defend the off season in a sense of the ownership has, has consistently put a broomstick up, up fans ass right now with, with the, the money situation, but for what the, the, the moves that they were able to do, I think were, were, were very good. I think you bolstered a good bullpen that is now, ranked as one of the best bullpens in baseball. Right. Um, I think this rotation is better than a lot of people think. And I think the issue with the twins is even last year, the twins were never looked at as a good team. And I don't understand why going into this year, I understand the central is weak. It absolutely is the weakest division in baseball right now, but that doesn't count the twins as a bad team, especially a team that came out and beat a good blue Jays team in the postseason. This, this right. team won a playoff series and made it to the second round and immediately they're not, I mean, you've got some people putting them on as high as 10th on their power rankings. You got some people thinking they're going to finish fourth in the AL Central, all because the Royals signed Michael Walker. So I don't, I don't understand it right now. Um, this team is really good. It, it's a good and, team. And, and, and my point was, but, but, but the thing is, is that when you get to playoff time, you're not going to be trying to beat the other teams in the American League Central. And, and I guess that was my point is that, 
you're going to, you, you, you're not going to get to the world series. I don't think on being pretty good. You're going to be, have to be very good or great to get to that point. And that's, I think that's the thing that I was bitching about the most. Now, my question to you is, uh, cause I was reading the star tribune, uh, this morning and talked about, uh, free agency now is going to be open for the guys like a Blake Snell or Jordan Montgomery, that this is the time it's going to, even though pitchers and catchers reported, I believe yesterday, um, that it's, it's going to heat up now. Do the twins make a big splash? Someone like Blake Snell or Jordan Montgomery, I Bellinger. No, I, that's not even a, a, a conversation, but do you think that they are going to make, and I'm not talking about, one of these mid mid road guys, or you know, Des Des Calfani, who might be something. Okay, I, I'm talking about like a big splash, like a Blake Snell. So, I, I think I I would not be surprised to see them do it. I I think it sounds like Blake Snell is probably going to New York. The Yankees yeah. is what it sounds like. Which great. Um, I, I could see Jordan Montgomery come to the Twins. It, it really depends on. I think the big splash would be an incentive-based deal with uh, like a short-term deal with uh, some opt-outs, kind of like a Carlos Correa deal from from two years ago. Um, I, I could also see them going out and just signing Michael A. Taylor and calling it good, which I'd be fine getting a Michael A. Taylor back. Um, but a middle of the rotation guy, like if they go get a, like I've seen Noah Syndergaard who had just the worst year ever. Michael Lorenzen who threw a new hit, a no hitter, but it was terrible down the stretch. I don't think that moves the needle at all. I like it at that point. It's you got Di Scafani for that. Why, why go get another guy like that? So I think it's, it's absolutely plausible for the, for the twins to go out and make that splash. Um, I, I think it's a 50, 50 at this point. One, one name that was had been thrown around recently that um, I did not hear until recently, and I could see the Twins doing this in a in a heartbeat, and I don't think that it necessarily helps your team out, was uh, Jake Odorizzi. And so, I, 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 he's like not the pitcher that we had – in 2019. And, you know, I, you know, I, I've always liked Jake Odorizzi. I wish he would have stayed here, but since his time with the twins, he has not even been close um, to, to a shadow of who Jake Odorizzi was in 2019. So, you know, you, you can, you can sign him to make yourselves feel better and, and say, well, you know what, maybe he's home because I know he's always liked playing in Minnesota. He's always said um, nothing but the best about the twins organization, but I don't think that's a guy that necessarily helps this team win any more ball games. No, and and Jake Odorizzi at this point would get a minor league deal, and at that point, it's there's no risk in that. I mean, he if he makes the club, great. It means he pitched the lights out, um, and if he doesn't, he's just some some depth at AAA, kind of like the uh, the uh, Dallas Keuchel kind of deal last year, where we would call him up, and I'd be perfectly okay with that. Um, now, the one guy I want to talk about because. We, we've already talked about gun control, whatever it might be. Let's just talk about one more topic, okay? Okay. Um, and the, mind you, depending on ever which, which way you go, you'll get hate from either side. So I think this will be funny. But um, Trevor Bauer. Because he will sign you know, for the I said, I said minimum. Trevor Bauer, I said I would have taken a chance on him a few years ago. Um, we all know about but there, there's something about him. I mean – there's there's something about Trevor Bauer that I I don't know I think he's farther down the road than a guy like AJ Brzezinski you know like a guy that is just a you think he's an asshole but you love him when you're on when he's on your team Bauer has done some things when he was with the Cleveland Indian or the Guardians that like even as a teammate you go God he's kind of an asshole um, but there's something about him that's intriguing, like in a nasty, don't talk about this at parties kind of place. Um, but for the most part, I don't think he fits the mold of the Minnesota Twins organization or uh, the kind of folks that come to the ballpark aren't like a Trevor Bauer. You know what I mean? Like, you understand what I'm saying? But yep. it's still enough to be intriguing. But I mean, he's been out of the game for a, for a long time, hasn't he? Well, yes. Um, I mean, you have to understand 2020, he, he was a Cy Young winner. 
And then last year he I, I can't remember if he did or not, but I believe was he in he Japan. Won the, I think he won the Cy Young in Japan. Yeah, and, right. And that guy, that guy can that guy can still pitch, man. And and he there are a lot of people that I, I see on Twitter, and it it's if you support them, you're automatically um a, a shitty Republican. You are yeah, yeah, just, yeah. you know, yeah. whatever. Um so, so Donald Trump is is guilty of Trevor Bauer's problems too, or what? I, 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 I'm not I don't that. know. And, and you know what? You're an automatic, just shitty human. If you, if you agree that Trevor Bauer should be on your team. Um, well, I'll are there restrictions? Yet. Are there restrictions in MLB right now for him? What, what did he do? No, he, no. He, he beat up a chick. Is that what he did? So, okay. So to, to not go into the full, uh, there was a whole, it was non-consensual. He beat up a girl, whatever. Um, during Wait, the she didn't give him permission to beat her up. I believe that in, in, in here's the thing. She, he was never, he was never, um, convicted. There was never a trial because there was never enough, whatever. I, I can't, I don't want to speak on the whole story cause I'm going to mess something up and then someone's going to attack me, whatever. Yeah. Now the, the, was the he thing about him, by major league baseball though? He, he had the longest suspension and then they, they got rid of it after he was proven innocent. Now, what other people are, are are bringing forward is, oh, well, there's four other accusations against him. However, great that none of them have made it to court. There's no whatever, like there's there's nothing on it. So I understand that you might think he's a bad guy. Um, well, and he, you know what? I I think he is kind of a jerk, right, but right. I like it. it it's like a Patrick Beverly type of type of. He just wants to win, and that's what I'm saying. If, if Mookie Betts can come out and say, yeah, I want him to get another second chance. I mean, that was his teammate and he just got ousted from the Dodgers in this, this dramatic fashion. And you got a teammate coming out and saying, yeah, give him a second chance. A guy can pitch. I right. mean, it, is there any, is there any scuttlebutt on if he's going to sign with a major league team this year? I don't, I don't think any team's going to take that, that risk. Um, and again, I think there, I mean, there's, there's, definitely risk in signing a Trevor Bauer, you know, to your point, he's not a twins. Like and he doesn't, the twins, the, the twins are the good guys. You know what I mean? And, and, yep. and Trevor Bauer just doesn't, I don't know if he fits that. Um, I think it'd be hilarious if he went to Houston, considering he just wow. trashed on Houston the whole yeah, time. I don't say that. I do. You, so what, what do you think? What, on a scale of one to 10, what what would the chances do you think of the twins even being involved in a conversation? Because I'm guessing you could get him for a box of popcorn, right? Like I mean, so he, he came out and said he would sign a league minimum deal with incentives. So essentially, a deal that that says prove prove to me you can pitch, which any any other guy, any people are lining up to sign it, sign him. Now, I think in the the one to ten scale range. The only reason I could see the twins having a larger interest in signing him is because Falvey worked with Cleveland when he was yep. in Cleveland. Yep. And so that's why now I also know him and Correa probably don't get along. So, you know. So what, what would you say a scale one to 10? Cause I would put it at about a two. I would say three. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, I, I think he goes back to Japan and proves himself again, but at that point he'll be 34, I think. So interesting. interesting. I don't know. I, I just like to see him get a, get a second chance. Yeah. Yeah. Personally. Okay. Um, all right. Well, now to not focus so much on the negatives, I'm going to bring a positive in because I guess the word out of uh, Fort Myers FLA is that. Byron Buxton's a hundred percent never felt better. And he thinks he's going to play in the outfield and he's, he's raring to go. Uh, your thoughts on that? Well, he just came out today saying uh, he's got a deal with Willie Castro and who can reach 30 steals faster this year. Um, I, so we, we play this, this optimistic game with Byron Buxton every year, I think. Um, and every year I think we say, well, it's going to be, it's going to be different. Um, I think in the last podcast, I was a little down on how many games he would play. And honestly, I'm going to throw the optimism back, back in this year and say that I I'm, I'm pretty optimistic this year on him just because this is the most I've ever seen him say how good he feels. I mean, right. even in the interview today, he, he just ear to ear smiling of, I feel really, really, really good. I mean, he said he, he wakes up in the morning 
without a knife feeling like a knife being punched into his knee. And I mean, we've never heard that from, from Byron Buxton before. I mean, years and years, it just seems like he's been plagued with injuries. Now that's not to say he's, it's not going to happen again right away. I mean, it just seems like it always happens, but you got to feel good. It, it, it'll be interesting to see if he is a hundred percent or even a hundred and two percent. And obviously I think, you know, I eventually, I think that these guys do hear what people are saying about, about them as well. You know what I mean? And you can laugh all the way to the bank uh, in one hand, but, but I think that there is some pride that goes along with these guys. So I, I think that he definitely wants to go out and prove something um, to a lot of, a lot of different people, whether it's locally or nationally. But um, if he is truly a hundred percent healthy and he, he plans on playing center field, I'm really going to be interested. Let's say the first two weeks, he doesn't show any rust. He looks good. How that's going to affect whether they platoon him between center field and designated hitter, how many days off he has how long it'll be until the injury bug hits again. You know what I mean? Like, um, or if they're, if they're going to try to protect him again um, and use pillow gloves and and say, well, we're going to give him a day in center field, maybe like on mother's day, then maybe on Memorial day, maybe the 4th of July, but we're going to still keep him because we're, we're so protective of him playing or roaming, roaming that center field. Um, I, I think that's going to be an interesting story. I'm not as I, I'm a little more optimistic this year than I was last year. Obviously, um, he's had a lot of time to sit. That's correct. I've, I've I barely hear optimism, but for for you and Byron Buxton, so that's kind of exciting. Not going to lie, but um, no, a, a healthy Byron Buxton completely like this. This team is a different level with a healthy Byron Buxton. I mean we know what he can do when he's healthy or when he's feeling good. I mean, we we've seen it. Um, and to, to have him in your lineup also where he could run, you know, and, and right. have that, that speed threat. Like that's just, <laughs> you see what Willie Castro and Michael A. Taylor can do on the bases. And that, that changes guys. But when you add a third threat in, in Byron Bucks in that, that's great. And to your point of figuring out how you're going to platoon him, um, I mean, I don't think he plays every day in center field. I think they're still going to be a little yeah. cautious and give him a day off every now and then. But that's the beauty of having a Willie Castro, a Edward Julian, uh, Brooks Lee potentially coming out. Like, there's so many guys you can just interlock, right. interchange into the, into this cog of a machine that I think will be pretty good this year. Well, and I, I'm, I'm encouraged that he's talking about stealing bases because – even when he got on, on base last year, you didn't think he was going to steal. You know what I mean? It, you, you just didn't have that where, you know, it, in years past, if he got on first base, it was like um, your father and my favorite game, uh, Status Pro Baseball. Ricky Henderson and Vince Coleman, if they got on first base, they automatically stole second base in this game. Like it, it wasn't you, – you couldn't even get to the next play because as soon as they got on first, they automatically stole second base. That's the kind of guy I remember Byron Buxton being. Yep. It would be great to see it now. I do want to say this with load management and whatnot, and, and we're, we're going to get to the NBA very, very shortly. Um, but something stood out to me when we're, we, we've talked about, you know, in the NBA taking taking games off when you're not really injured um, – taking the regular season as kind of a joke, not, not really playing hard until you get to the playoffs. We just talked about Buxton and how they're going to be able to use him uh, based on his health or his endurance or whatever it is. I don't watch as much hockey as I do basketball and baseball and obviously football, but doesn't it seem odd to you that hockey, NHL hockey to me is the toughest sport out of the big four like the most brutal, most violent chance of, of you getting injured is higher in hockey. And do you ever hear of hockey players having load management or taking days off? Never. You see guys, you see motherfuckers taking three, a puck to their face and getting three teeth knocked out, getting stitched up and go right back on the ice. And, and I don't know. I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there because I find, I mean, I already know hockey players are cut from a different cloth as far as pro athletes, but I find that funny that you never hear about load management in the NHL. And those guys are, they're tougher than a box of nails. Yeah, yeah they, they absolutely are 
cut from a from a they, they're just a different breed of of human i feel i feel like it's a uh, it's i i don't know what it is because yeah i didn't even think about the load and maybe there is some load management that we just don't know about or i don't you have I, healthy I scratches every once in a while but that's usually more they're in the doghouse the coach's doghouse than they they're not physically able to play right i i mean maybe it's just it, it's it's i don't know maybe yeah figure it out okay <laughs> figure i'll, it I'll out, get I back to you on that all right so i want to i want to go now to the next topic like now I was actually excited because I knew where I was going to be. I knew who I was going to be watching with this weekend um, and actually did Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I was actually slightly excited for NBA Jam All-Star Weekend. And did you catch any of the festivities, my friend? I watched zero because it just doesn't interest me anymore. Worst NBA Jam Weekend Ever, I, I mean, it, it, it was, it was so bad. Um, every, every aspect of, of the weekend was, was bad. Like the celebrity game was more entertaining almost than, than the game on Sunday. And, and I didn't know anybody like, I know i life has passed me by. I only knew former NBA players were the only ones that I really knew or NFL players that were in the celebrity, uh, the celebrity game. But, I'm sorry, man. Like my buddy brought up a good point. He said, well, <laughs> the home run derby is now probably the only thing that I can honestly be entertained um, during an all-star weekend. And for me, I'm not really because I, the home run derby gets old for me after a while, but I've always looked forward to uh, the three point shootout and the slam dunk championship. And what a waste of time, absolute waste of time. It, it was so bad. The the dunk contest has never ever 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 been the same, and I would 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 have to say it might never be the same ever since Zach Levine went back to back. It it, it just ever since then I've watched it and I it just maybe there's some bias of just like oh he was on my team and I love to see him just but it's I'll just never that. felt the same. Last year was entertaining. I, I really thought that last year's and it, it gave me hope that that it was going to be different because there were several years that the dunk competition was just so bad. Last year I thought it was it was good. Uh and then this year it was like nobody was trying. Nobody was trying to do anything. And and um the skills uh game before that, like I, thanks to Anthony Edwards. For, you know, I know he's working on his left-handed his left-handed jump shot, but you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna wait for a skills competition to debut that. Like, it, no, it, it really riled one of my buddies up. What is he doing? He's shooting with his left hand, and it really pissed P off. I I thought Edwards was gonna bring a lot more to this weekend, but it was it was just it just not interesting at all. I was not entertained. Well, and it just shows you how much. For, for Anthony Edwards to come out to a competition and shoot with his left hand, which I think it's entertaining, but also like it just shows you how much they don't care. You know right. what I mean? Like it, it's, I mean, Cat had 50 in the All Star game. Where you get I, that? Yep. Okay. So, and poor Bay, I feel no, don't, now don't go off on Cat because that poor guy, once again, he had a memorable night and it's overshadowed because his team lost and, and everybody every, hit the focus. Wasn't Carl Anthony towns last night. And, and I, I, you know, and I'm sorry, towns, that's what happens when you get 15 uncontested slam dunks in the lane where nobody played anything. You get to 50 points. He's one of four players in NBA history to hit 50 points in an all-star game. And nobody even whispered anything about it. Um, to absolutely, and I said before the game, I said, they're going to get to 200. I said this a week before Sunday's game, that they're going to score 200 points. Not a good look for the NBA. They did. They had 104 points at halftime. How you tell me this? No, this is how bad it was. How can you make white guys look slower on the court? Okay. 
we'll just have an NBA All-Star game. Jokic and Doncic, they they were basically, I, I don't even would say jogging. They were walking during most of their time on the court. You had guys shooting three-pointers from half court. Now, albeit both of them went in and easily, uh, you know, but here's the thing. Major League Baseball is the only all-star competition that I can take seriously ever anymore. You know, the NFL, forget about that. I did watch the flag football, but I think the NFL is, you know, partnering with the lingerie league next year. So they're going to have a tickle fight flag football all-star game. Um, NBA is absolutely ridiculous uh, at, at what we saw. We And I love Donich doing the, the, uh, the tip to himself and getting stuffed by the rim on his dunk. Towns scoring 50 points. Oh, by the way, he shot the ball 35 times. The second most shot attempts on the Western Conference, 17. Okay? I mean, ridiculous. Um, the only way, and, and this is what I'm saying, when Major League Baseball goes to a deal where, well, this isn't a real game any longer, so now – the uh, left fielder has to catch a fly ball in his hat, you know, I, or players aren't allowed to actually hit for singles or doubles any longer. They have to hit a home run. That's the only way or else it's an automatic out. You're ruining the game, NBA. It's not a good look. And I I think that might have been my last NBA All-Star game that I'd, I'd ever watch. Seriously. I, I haven't watched it in – Years, years, just because it's actually, I should say, I watched a little bit of the, I think it was the 2021 where they had to hit a certain score and it was so somewhat competitive at the end. It was actually yeah. not bad. Um, I don't know why they got rid of that, but you know, all the players knew it too. They said some has to change because it was just terrible. No one cares. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, I don't know if it's, I, I understand no one wants to get hurt. And, and I would like, if, if Anthony Edwards came out hurt, I would be pissed, but we've all played big pickup basketball. Noah, you, you, you can play at least 30% defense, 40% maybe, and you're not going to get hurt. I just, I, it, 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 it just, it, it didn't, I don't know. It didn't look professional at all to me. And, and um, like I say, I'd, when I was your age, you could scam chicks into coming over like hey you want to come over like the nba all-star game is on with no intention of watching the game just to get oh yeah that sounds fun johnny i'll be right over i wouldn't even embarrass myself to invite a, a young lady to come and watch it because it's not entertaining to me at all and and to me they should just except for all the money that they're bringing in they should just be done with it you know what i mean like it, it's it's uh and like I say, I, I feel bad for Carl Anthony Towns. I'm sorry, buddy. It just didn't work out for you. But, you know, and oh, by the way, I will say this, though, my friend. Edwards was keeping track of points for Towns on the bench. Every time that there was a loose ball, he was flashing how much. And Edwards, would, or uh, Towns said that, you know, Steph Curry was saying, oh, go for 50, man. Go. Guess what, Mr. Towns? This is the kind of game that you can do that. This, they're not a regular season game, so this is one where you actually can say, I'm going for 50 tonight, so I'm going to shoot the ball 35 times, more than anybody else, and there's no consequences to it. Well, you can go for 50 at a regular season game. Just please be efficient and also involve your teammates. I, right. Like that – yes. Um, no, it, it's – now I will say um, still to this day at this All-Star break – um, besides Anthony Davis and LeBron James, everyone else still was really not showing a lot of the Timberwolves much love, uh, no. especially Draymond Green, who said, you know, he has no issue with the Wolves and that, that they would beat him in the playoffs every time. And I'm sorry, we match up pretty well with the Warriors. I would take the Warriors anytime in a first round matchup, but, uh, Draymond only said Ant was the only issue. Uh, he's got nothing on Rudy, nothing on Cat, whatever. Um, he was getting on, on cat as well for said, Oh, it's another 40 point, uh, 40 point cat game. Um, but the, the, the team is down 20. So it's just yep. a normal cat game. However, I, I get it, but also 
There, there's stats that say that every time he scores 40 points, nine out of 10 times the team wins. So um, I just don't like Draymond Green. But um, oh, I, I don't think his wife likes him. At, at what point do, does – because I'll give it like – I mean, LeBron was showing love to, to Anthony Edwards. AD said the Wolves were the hardest team uh, in this Western Conference. Um, CJ McCollum of the Pelicans said that he has no issues with the Wolves. Now I'll give it – the Pelicans beat us. Um, but at what point does a one seed, when you make it this far, you have the best record against over 500 teams in the NBA. At what point do you get a little bit of respect or is it just because it's the Timberwolves that no Um, one cares? You have to go more than half a season. Um, and I, I think we've talked about that before is that I'm not worried about the lack of, of love or the lack of notoriety that the wolves get right now um because we we have said this all year for for a very long time that you haven't done anything yet and you're you're still only a, only a game and a half up in the western conference yes you've had first place for majority of the year but a lot can change in two months and and unless you get out of the first round legit nobody is going to say nobody is really going to give you accolades for being in first place the majority of the year. If you can't get out of a playoff series, it's not going to matter. And the fact that the whole world and the NBA hates Rudy Gobert, that that's one thing. Most of uh, the, most of the world hates Carl Anthony Towns. That's number two. And number three is the Wolves have not done anything in 30 years. So, um, I I like being the underdog. I like I don't like it when the Vikings are favored in an NFC Championship game and should just handle business and don't. Um, I like the up and coming. We're against the world and we have to fight against the world. Now, conspiracy theorists would tell us that it's not going to work out for us because the NBA is rigged, right? And like, but no, I I say if you if you want that recognition, then go out and fucking earn it. No, I, I, I completely agree. I, I think it's the way that the, the issue for me is the way that it's being said of the Wolves are not an issue. And this team is absolutely a good team and people are treating it differently. And, and I, I go back to last year. You remember the Kings last year? Yeah. The team that was so bad and just got did really well last year. Um, we're, we're far and away worse than this team was last year. And all of a sudden, no one wanted to play them in the playoffs. Everyone was was talking all this and this and that about the Kings and how it was you know it, they're a good team they're up, up and coming whatever. Um, I mean I think they finish as the the three seed uh, and they got bounced in the first round. So right. it, I I think I just wanted a little bit of at least acknowledge that this is a good team and stop saying how much of a, a breeze it's going to be to play us. Well, if if the Wolves go into the playoffs and play the kind of defense that they've been playing all year. Let those motherfuckers talk to us after a seven game series and see if they're saying the same things, because I would not want to face the wolves in the first round. I would not, Um, you know, and so I, I, you know, and and as far as I, I think Kendrick Perkins came out and did say this maybe about a week and a half ago, did say this wolves team is for real. And, and, and so I think there are no, people notice, you know, Stephen A. Smith said, put Anthony uh, Edwards on national TV more so we can see him. I mean, I think that if you maintain what's been going on and, and are able to continue that in the playoffs of what you've been doing all year, um, I think that there will be people saying, you know what, maybe we, we didn't see this coming. Don't you think? Absolutely. Um, and I think, uh, they'll be able to continue that with their, their new uh, extension that they just completed here that I just told you about at the beginning That's right. of the video. Uh, Mike Conley, two-year extension after this year, $21 million. It's about $10 million a year, um, which is a complete steal. This guy right. was going to get at least $15 million next year. Um, keeps you in that second bracket of the, the tax apron um, for, for any of you that, that, that care about that. Um, I think this is a, a phenomenal, phenomenal. Well, move. And that, that's interesting. I heard him on uh, local talk radio. I think this was last week 
and they were asking about his numbers and how, how good he feels this year. And they said, well, would you, you know, if you had the opportunity, would you try to play to 40 years old? And he flat out said, man, if I feel this good, there'd be no reason why I would not play 20 years in the NBA if I had a chance to do it. Um, and so I think that kind of solidifies that idea right there by, by, by inking them in. Absolutely. I, I think it's a, it's a complete kind of ride into the sunset kind of deal. I mean, you never know. He might play after this, but um, I, I think it's great, be, especially with what the the point guard situation for the Wolves is right now, because uh, Monte Morris is a free agent after this year. Um, Care. So at least at least you got him. Uh, you got you got Mike for next year. Um, just a, it seems like a vet that just holds the team together, which I think is great for for yeah. the next couple of years, especially well, for him. So apparently because we, we've we kind of had some lulls in talking Wolves basketball. I think the last time we did, I was quite down on, and then they, they came back. Like I'm trying to figure out because my point was in after January 1st, the Wolves slowly became the same team as they were last year. Win one, lose one, win one, lose one. And, and the way that they were losing was quite alarming. But then recently, right before All-Star break, they went and first of all, for our, our good friends like Gus and any, you know, anyone else that married into a Wisconsin family, you got to feel for Bucks fans, man, because they are terrible. They suck. But that being said, we did go into Milwaukee and busted them out, right? Then you had another good win against the Clippers. Uh, well, we were riding four going into All-Star break, right? Yep. And, and beat some good teams in that, in that process. Um, apparently the word I heard was Finch was able to go to towns and say, you need to stop this now. You've, you've got to get back. Cause he's not playing defense. He's not playing defense. And, and said, we're going to go as far as you allow us to go in some, re some regards. And that hit. And apparently Gobert and Finch can talk to Towns and, and flat out just say, what, what the fuck are you doing? And, and that works well. It, it's helped going into the all-star break. And so now you go, you go, and geez, I don't, I don't know. Wh which team is this? Is this the team from the beginning of the year? Or are we going to limp or hump our way into the playoffs uh, where, where it is? A win one here, lose one. Win two, lose another big one. You know what I mean? Or where we can actually go, let's come out of all-star break. We're on a four-game win streak. Let's win the next six in a row. I, I think it's lo looking at the team. Um, it, yeah, some of those losses were frustrating. Um, but again, I, I, I've said it all year, like that the teams are going to go through lulls. Um, like I said, we have the best win percentage against plus 500 teams. Um Everyone loves the Thunder, the Clippers, uh, these teams. But when you talk about blowing leads, like they've they've done the same thing. They've done the same thing to to blow five hundred teams. They have worse records against below five hundred teams. Um, so comparing the two, like that, this team is still really good. And I I do think that especially after winning these next four, you add a nice point guard in Monte Morris. Um, I think this team has some nice fire, firepower going into the playoffs. Um, you just got to keep that same mindset. I, I'm glad that Finchie can go to a guy like Towns and just say, figure it out because we need you right now. Um, well, Gobert yeah. said that too. Gobert well, said right. he flat out came up to him and said, what the fuck? And exactly. he's like, I'm sorry for cussing, but you know, that's how we talk to each other. Well, and, and, and people had, had wondered because when that came out where, where Gobert said, you know, I, I can tell him what the hell are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. People were wondering, so why didn't that work for Jimmy Butler? Because Jimmy Butler did the same thing. But oh, I think, it's I think Jimmy was a little more abrasive. I, I think he was just a tad more, um, you know, like Gobert said he didn't sugarcoat it. But I'm, I'm guessing Jimmy didn't sugarcoat it. And he might have said something about your mom. Exactly. Yeah, sorry. No, not Town's mom. But, you know. You hear what I'm saying? He might have got a little more personal um, than than anybody else. So um, that's my that's my spin on that. Yeah, it's I don't know. It, it's encouraging. I think um, 
I will say just uh, the one thing I will say about the All-Star weekend that I did try to watch was uh, I tried to get as much Chris Finch content as I could because I'm so proud of the guy for, for, I, I just think it's so cool to see your staff uh, coaching the all-star game and just the recognition of, of all of that. And, and looking at where Chris Finch came, I mean, this guy didn't think he'd ever be coaching in the NBA. Now he's coaching the all-star game. Right. Um, I, I just love our coach. Like I, I really do. I think he's, he's phenomenal. And um I, I'm glad to see that that he can come up to our players and 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 tell them to to get it going because um, some past coaches it just it never worked I, I, I it just never did and I'm glad we finally got that guy in the driver's seat. Yeah, uh, my last uh, takeaway from All Star uh, Weekend was I couldn't believe um, I watched the celebrity uh, basketball game and I I can't believe that Jennifer Hudson didn't get many more minutes than what she did. Uh, who, who she was in the game? Well, she was, yes. Uh, she did a hell of a job on Sunday, though, man, at halftime. She she was she was pretty good uh, at the, the halftime uh, deal. And I'm not a big Jennifer Hudson fan but because she can't play basketball. But, um, okay, last thing I'm going to bring up regarding our Timberwolves. Um, the one thing, and we have talked about uh, when folks are going to start growing up, we already mentioned the left-handed shooting in the skills competition. But against the Clippers, now granted, the, the game was a 20-plus game. But Anthony Edwards is trying to bank in three-pointers enough that it eventually gets him benched. Um, I, this is why the NBA sometimes loses me is because when you're doing shit like that where it should be enough that you're beating a really good team in the LA Clippers and beating, like, not just beating them, you're spanking them, but you have to bench your star player because he's, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, he, kind of being a prick, you know, trying to bank in three-pointers, and he made one, but then he was doing it even even more obnoxiously, if that's if that's possible, and that's when Finch finally benched him. I say it a lot. Not a good look. It's not a good look. No, I'm glad Finch benched him. I, there's a lot of coaches that wouldn't do it either. Right. So, because um, he was trying to do the same thing with free throws, and he, yep. I think he made a couple. But um, if it's the I'm trying to work more on my game type of thing, I get it. But it was more of a I'm just trying to be showy at this point yep. because you know, like in a game we're up twenty, he's gonna shoot with his left hand too. Um, a couple times, not just once. So I don't know. Cause if I'm if I'm the opposing team too, and I've got some guy chucking up left handed threes, I don't know. It, I don't really like that. I like, like stealing kind of a, second base in the ninth inning when yep. you're up by 12 runs, right? I mean, it, it's not and it's it's not it, it's showing people up. And it, it, like I say, it, it's 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 kind of being young and stupid, in in my opinion. So, um, I guess at what point do you do you say, you know what, you need to, you need. To, I mean, and I love Edwards. You know, like I, I I will never say anything bad about the guy. At least right not not right now. I mean, he just came out and said New York and L.A. might look nice with all the lights, but I'm staying here in Minnesota unless they traded me. I'm staying here. I am here for the long haul to give Minnesota a championship. My hat's off to you, sir. You go get some. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it's my favorite comments when people say that just because yep. pe people don't do that for Minnesota. So especially when you have a guy like, like Edwards, um, who's, who's saying like, yo, this is, this is where we're going to, we're going to make it work. Um, it, it, it's fun to see that now. Um, if he's starting to keep trying to bank it, I don't think it's going to happen anymore. I, I think it was a, the all-star break is coming. We're up by 20. I'm just going to have fun. Um, if it continues, I think it's an issue personally, but um, I don't know. It's, it is what it is right now. Right. And, and, you know, we, we all know that because I, I brought it up in previous podcasts that the bank shot is just killer. Like he, like, he has perfected it in a way, and and when it's effective that way, that's fine. But you don't force something like that, and you certainly don't force it um, to show, "Hey, look what I can do." Kind of, kind of, you know what I mean? Like, um, 
All right. Well, there you go. Uh, to me, we have nothing but good times ahead of us. Um, Timberwolves speaking, obviously Minnesota Twins speaking. The Vikings haven't cleared up any of that fucking mess yet, which we'll, we'll go ahead and see. Minnesota Wild haven't lost in uh, five games, I believe. They screwed one up the other night uh, against Buffalo at home. Uh, but uh, And even the Gophers are 500 in the Big Ten. So, you hey, know. Man, that, that might be a tournament team this year. Uh, Big Ten tournament team. That's about it. Uh, oh. But Cam Christie, that freshman, you know, his brother plays in the NBA. Max Christie. You're right. To me, Cam Christie might be the first University of Minnesota NBA player. Yeah, you got you got Amir Coffey. Um, but other than Coffey, what does it go back to Chris Humphreys? I think there was uh, Daniel Oturu back a, a couple of years you're right, ago. You're right. You're right. He's, I'm talking about him. a guy that actually plays in the rotation, though. Hey, I'll I'll take it. I also like Amir Coffey. I think he can get some yeah, some he, real NBA minutes. He actually but. gets minutes. He he played against us the other night, right? Like yep, yep. he's not like a two way guy anymore. He's I don't, think, I don't think he's a two way, but I he's definitely like a you know he'll he'll play as much as maybe Wendell Moore does. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, okay, all right. God bless America. God bless the Timberwolves and the Minnesota Twins and the Minnesota Wild. Uh, you don't happen to know? I I saw Minnesota United has. Their first game, I think, next week. Do they have a coach yet? I don't know, but uh, it's kind of hey, weird, hey, isn't it? That's hey, if we if we want to talk soccer, I got some uh, I got some people that will come talk some soccer if we want to do that. Well, that's great. I just can't watch it because all their games are on fucking Apple Plus again. And Roger Goodell said not opposed to streaming the Super Bowl in years to come. So noodle on that for a while. There we go. <laughs> all right. Uh, might as well uh, end this uh, this show on a high note. La, okay. Uh, trying to be a little bit more positive as the as the weeks go on, Noah. So uh, we will see you very soon. For everybody that tunes in, we appreciate the support. For Noah Storzinger, I'm Johnny Boss. This show to be named later podcast. We will see you next time.